Hey, how's it going, guys? Mr. Spirit here, bringing you How Do I Pyro Edition. And today, we're going to look over this lovable fuzzball, but not this one. This one! This little guy has been up for debate whether male or female for a long time, and has been on many ends of controversy of why do you WM1? Why do you WM1? Well, I'll prove to you that WM1 is actually a legitimate tactic. So, we'll be going over them on our regular training course, TR Walkway. We'll start with how each of his weapons function. The Pyro's main weapon is a flamethrower. It's a very short range weapon. However, you can extend the range by walking backwards, or shorten the range by walking forwards. Yes, that's right, the range goes smaller when walking forwards, and larger when going backwards. This is due to the particle effects that Valve has programmed, and there's not much you can do about it. His next weapon is the shotgun, which is the same stock shotgun that everyone has, does 90 damage at max. And that's about it. Nothing really special about it. Finally, the fire axe. The worst stock weapon in the whole game. Why? 65 damage. Well, you think that's not that bad. Flamethrower does more. In one second, the flamethrower can put out 150 damage. Don't believe me? Watch this engineer. Toast. One second. Scout. Dead. Pyro. One and a half seconds. Critical flames. Toast even faster. You can literally melt classes to pieces if they walk in a straight line. Now, what the flamethrower can do for its specialty is you can light people and forget it. They'll burn for 6 damage over a total of 10 seconds for an additional 60 damage. That means a scout will lose half his health by the end of it. That poor scout. I hate missing health packs when I'm on fire as him. Just watch. He'll burn right out. See? Set and forget. And reignite him restarts the fl time all over again. That's right. From 10 seconds. Oh, 10 seconds again. You will always constantly have a 10 second timer until the time you let go of that flame off. And they will take afterburn damage while they are still being damaged by your flamethrower. So this is why the flamethrower can do massive amounts of damage. The only other weapon that can do that much, this close up, is the minigun from the Heavy, and we will cover him on another date. So, people also don't realize, the Pyro has a second capability with his flamethrower, Air Blast. By hitting your right mouse button, you can send opponents up in the air. You can reflect projectiles such as Jurati, Milk, Rockets, stickies, grenades, the guillotine, sandman balls, rap assassin balls, arrows, crossbows, candy canes. Yes, that's right. You can air blast nearly anything that is a projectile. You just need to have your timing. This can also be used to put out teammates who are on fire. Yes, if an enemy pyro has lit your team on fire, you can air blast them. If the enemy uses an uber, you can delay them by holding them up in the air with your air blast and keep them in a corner until either they decide to kill you or they run out of uber and your team just mauls them to death. And air blast juggling is not that hard, it just takes a bit of practice and you'll be able to do something like this. Just remember, they will shoot at you too, trying to get away from you. And be wary doing it to spies, they can use that air time to get a drop stab on you. You sneaky little rogue, you. 
Your flamethrower will also catch cloak spies and sky spies. The enemy team will always have a glow around them when on fire of that team. As you can see, he glows blue. If your team glows red, if you're on red, he is a friendly. And use the mouse 2 button to air blast him and put out that fire. If he glows blue, you can air blast him into a corner so he can't get to the health pack. Or you can just keep burning them until they die. That's where WM1 comes in. You've heard the term before. And this is a legitimate tactic. Why? You do so much damage, they're not going to know what hit them. The original Pyro, before the Pyro update, only had Mouse 1 for his flamethrower. There was no Complexion Blast. So, you would hide behind a wall or in a corner. Enemy walks by, kill him behind them, light them on fire. Rinse, repeat. You had to be sneaky as a pyro to actually do anything. So if people say WM1 is not a legitimate tactic, send them to this video. They will know and learn that WM1 is legit. Why? It guarantees a kill. However, don't walk in a straight line. It makes you easier of a target. And anyone who can shoot can hit someone who runs in a straight line. And if you never use your air blast, soldiers and demo men will get the best of you. Now to hide better, your flamethrower actually sticks out from behind this sign. So you pull out your shotgun or your fire axe. Then you wait, enemy comes by, pop out the flamethrower, you get up close, and let the flames go. Don't go chasing them where you're not going to reach them right away. Because that puts out a sound that people should recognize. Just listen. That's the sound of terror. That means look around quickly, see if it's yours or the enemy. Now there is another tactic that you can use. Since the pyro is short range, his shotgun's a medium range weapon. Light your opponent, and while he's running on fire, pull out your shotgun, shoot him in the back, or shoot opponents to get close, switch to the flamethrower, and give him a nice bath in flame. Remember to aim for the chest with any shotgun. This will minimize any bullet spread and cause more damage. Aiming at the feet, not as good. Aiming towards the head. Not as good. Aiming at the chest? Perfect. Remember, light and aim for the chest. There's nothing they can't escape from. Especially if you're a smart pyro. However, do not light and try and chase with your fire axe. It'd be better to just use your flamethrower or the shotgun with it. Unless you're going for an achievement, then yes, use your fire axe, but only in the achievement attempt. So next, I want to show you how we compression blast. So we go into our special mode called air blast training. This will change all our targets into soldiers and demo men. But, this is not just what we do. We have to set up a few other things in our walkway. We want to make sure bots do not move. We want to kill all the bots so they reset. We want to make sure the bots have an attack, a constant attack. And you'll see, demo men fire grenades. Soldiers fire rockets. It's all about getting that timing. And when we hit with a reflect, we do mini crits. If we reflect a critical, it will go back as a critical. And you can reflect multiple projectiles at once. 
with grenades. You can send the rollers back, or if you practice, you can send the pills back in that arc for a direct pill. Targets will go directly towards where your crosshair is pointing. So make sure you aim or lead your target you are reflecting to. Watch as such. I can send it back. Right at a group. Or I can send it towards another target entirely. You can hit multiple rockets back at once, or multiple pills, or all of the above. Make sure you remember Mouse 2 is useful against projectiles. There's nothing wrong with messing up a reflex, it does take practice. So, for our final study of the pyro, Sentry guns. Everyone's worst enemy. We want a constant resupply. And we want to set up a sentry gun. That is, move us to our place. And move for the level one. As most people realize, walking towards the sentry is going to get you killed. Trying to flame a sentry will get you killed. Pull out your shotgun if the engineer is not around. Grass his gun. With enough shots, you will take it out if he is nowhere near to come back and repair it. Now with a level 3, we can actually use our compression blast for a bit more fun. We walk forward. Crack them, send the rockets back. Bait and switch. And we can destroy the sentry or the engineer or his teammates with those rockets. That's right. We can destroy. Let, let's show this again. Bait out with a few bullets. And you time those rockets. You want to make sure that thing pops up and back down. Yes, if it is down, it will not fire rockets and you'll just be taking bullet damage. If it is up, it will fire rockets. You can also deal with guns through the means of walls and corners. So let's say an engineer has built by a wall. You somehow get near it. You can edge it put your flame, your flame has a cone, and it'll attack, and if the engineer is behind his building, he will melt just as fast as the sentry. Never be afraid to use a corner or a wall to your advantage, and never be afraid to use your shotgun as well. I'm trying to spawn a sentry on a wall. Congratulations, I am an idiot. So another tactic that can be used, if you watch the timing, you can circle strafe it. And if you're really good, you won't take any of that damage, and you'll melt that engineer right along with him. So unless he decides to back up, his sentry's as good as gone. Overall, the Pyro is a very decent class. He's great for beginners with his average speed, medium health pool, and no need for reloading on his flamethrower, but there is a need for his shotgun. So be wary about that. And never be afraid of the WM1 tactic, it is legitimate. Remember, Pyro never had the air blast to begin with. Remember your air blast for projectiles to help fellow engineers. They will love you for this. Or use it to put out teammates. They will love you 
even more. And use corners and edges to your advantage. You have a cone. Use it. You can do a lot more than you think you can. And remember, if the spy comes near you, give him a bit of a flame. They just love being lit on fire. It's like giving them a bear hug, but without the bear, in a much more lethal way. So, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. How do I pyro?